Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. We're looking at 1.2 MCAT Algebra and we're focusing on all the 2017 merit questions. Let's get straight into it. Question number nine from the website. Um, a nice straightforward one to understand, but we've been given a quadratic and then we've been asked to solve for it. So let's jot down our quadratic. 2x squared minus 3x minus 9 equals to 0. Um, so when you're solving a quadratic, it must be equal to 0 and it must be factorized. So that last bit's the issue here. So we need to go ahead and factorize it. This one's not going to be the easiest factorizing because of that 2 sitting out front. So we're going to use the grouping method to factorize this. We can then go ahead and solve each of the brackets individually. So our starting point, we're going to go 2 times negative 9. So we've got 2 times negative 9. That comes to negative 18. I now need to think what number adds to the negative 3 in the middle and multiplies to the negative 18 over there. Um, and I'm thinking probably got something to do with 6 and 3. So if you have a look, negative 6 times 3, that is equal to negative 18. Negative 6 plus 3, that is equal to negative 3, which means I have got my numbers. So I'm now going to split this x in the middle up. It's going to be split up to negative 6 and positive 3 based on those two numbers I found out. So we've got 2x squared minus 6x plus 3x minus 9 equals 0. And you can see we've split them up, and that's based on the numbers that we figured out down there. Now it's called the grouping method because we're going to factorize the groups. There's the first group and Two at the end, that's the other group there. Let's single bracket factorize each of these. So that's going to be 2x, x minus 3. We're then going to single bracket factorize the rest. Um, and that's going to be 3 in common. So x minus 3 equals 0. Running out of room there, but that's all right. I like what I see because I've got the same bracket coming up twice. That means I haven't done any silly math errors. So let's put our first bracket, x minus 3. The leftover parts... 2x and plus 3, they're going to form the next bracket. 2x plus 3, they equal to 0. Let's split them off now. So this is going to be my first solution. I'm going to make it equal to 0. I'm then going to solve by going plus 3 plus 3, which means x1, or my first answer for x, is going to be positive 3. I'm then going to look at the next side here. So we've got 2x plus 3. That should be equal to 0. I'm now going to go minus 3 minus 3, which means 2x is equal to negative 3. I'm then going to go divide by 2, divide by 2, which means our second answer for x, x2, is equal to negative 3 over 2. Now moving on to question number 10, and we've got a quadratic fraction. We've been asked to simplify it. So let's start by jotting down our fractions. We've got x squared, or written x negative, x squared minus 5x plus 4, that is over 5x squared minus 20x. So for this type of question, my strategy is normally factorize the numerator, factorize the denominator, see what cancels out, and then you'll be able to figure out the simplified version. So this time around, the top one there, that's going to be a nice easy double bracket because of the x squared here. This bottom one here, it looks a bit messy because of the 5x squared, but because there's no number sitting at the end, it's going to be a regular single bracket. So it looks like a tricky question, but I think both factorizing will be quite easy. So equals, I now need to think what number adds to positive 5, multiplies to negative 4, and hopefully you're getting the same as me, negative 1 and negative 4. So they're going to be my double brackets, x minus 1, x minus 4, and that is going to be over. We now single bracket factorize the bottom, I can see they've got a 5 in common, and I can see they've got an x in common. What is left over? There is 1x from the 5x squared left over, and there is a times negative 4. And I'm liking what I'm seeing because I can see the same bracket coming up twice, and that's exactly what we want for these quadratic fractions. Let's cancel them out. And that leaves us with our simplified answer. It's going to be x minus 1 over 5x. Question number 11 from the website, we've got the area of a rectangle can be represented by this here, and area of a rectangle, um, that's normally a bit of a giveaway for these MCAT, MCAT questions, the sides must be positive, 
give a quadratic expression that represents the area of this rectangle, what possible values for x would you get? So this time around, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to factorize this because my area is always equal to base times height. And it's really common for these questions to get two brackets. And then it gets you to think about each of the sides and whether or not it's positive or negative and will give an appropriate answer. So let's do that here. We've got 3x squared plus 2x minus 40. Um, the factorizing method is going to be a bit annoying because there is a 3 in the front and there's no common factors. So I'm left with the grouping method just like I did for question number 9. So we're going to go 3 times negative 40. 3 times negative 40 equals to negative 120. I now need to think what adds to this positive 2 and multiplies to this negative 120. And straight away I'm thinking 10 and 2 because they add to this and they've got a difference of that 2. Um, I'm now just going to think which way they're around. So it's probably going to be positive 12 times negative 10 because that's negative 120. And then positive 12 plus negative 10 equals positive 2. So I've got both of those things I'm looking for. I'm now going to split my 2x into 12x and minus 10x. So 3x squared plus 12x minus 10x minus 40. I now factorize the groups. They have a 3x in common, leaving x plus 4. They have a negative 10 in common, also leaving x plus 4. Big fan of that. The same bracket coming up twice, which means I haven't stuffed up. I'm now going to have that bracket x plus 4 over there, leftover parts forming the next bracket. So that there is 3x minus 10. So I've now factorized. I now need to actually think about what the possible values for x would be. So I know both of these here must be greater than 0, or else it wouldn't be a rectangle. So greater than 0, that would be minus 4 minus 4. So this one here tells us x must be greater than negative 4. And this bracket over here, 3x minus 10 must be greater than 0, plus 10 plus 10. 3x must be greater than 10, divide by 3, divide by 3, x must be greater than 10 over 3. And I'm liking this answer because it's a lot more useful. Um, so what that tells us is x must be greater than 10 over 3 for this rectangle to exist and to have negative or positive sides and positive area. Therefore, x must be greater than 10 over 3 to have sides and a positive area. So this wraps up the merit questions from the 2017 exam. Hopefully you found it useful. Keep an eye out for the other videos coming out soon.